Hi again. So those of you that are learning the product rule, if you checked out my last video, um, differentiation product rule one, those are basic product rule examples. Now we're going to do a bit more advanced product rule examples, including the chain rule and exponential functions, because you guys will see that later on if you take calculus. So my first example, and just for reference, Right? If my function is the product of u times v, then my first derivative is equal to, and hopefully you guys watched my first video, first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And every time that we take um, a derivative using the product rule, we're going to say that out loud. So let's let our function f of x be equal to... Um, let's make it 2x times the quantity 3x plus 1 squared. Okay, and I want to take the first derivative of this. Now, again, I could get away without going through the product rule because I could multiply this out and then multiply that and take a basic derivative. But if this exponent were higher than 2, you wouldn't want to do that. You definitely would want to use the product rule. Now, in this case, u, my first expression of x, is going to be 2x, and my v is this whole thing 3x plus 1 squared. Okay, I have the product of two expressions. So my first derivative is equal to the first, copy it down, times the derivative of the second, and the derivative of v now is a chain rule. I bring the two down, keep the base, Subtract 1 from the exponent, and the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. So this is my u, and this whole thing is my v prime. First times the derivative of the second, plus the second, 3x plus 1 squared, times the derivative of the first, which is 2. So this is my v times u prime. So I'm going to go ahead and look at it again. And if you guys forgot how to find the derivative of a chain rule, or using the chain rule, go ahead and check out that video, okay, to reference this part. Because to find the derivative of the second expression, you need a chain rule. So I have the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first. And now I simplify. Okay, so here... And I want you guys to notice that I do use brackets here when I find the derivative using the chain rule just to keep it nice and organized. I don't want to mix up things with multiple parentheses and double and triple parentheses. It just makes it a little bit cleaner to look at. So I'm going to keep the 2x out here. And inside the brackets, I'm going to multiply the 2 and the 3. 6 times 3x plus 1. And then plus this 2 times this 3x plus 1 squared. So basically the only thing that I changed from this to this is this 3 times 2 being 6. And because this is just a product, I put the constant in front. And the reason that I do that is what makes this easier is to deal with the GCF. Greatest common factor. Now the greatest common factor here is a little bit more difficult than, you know, other basic type of examples. And if you guys need a practice on that, again, I have a video on GCF. Check that out. Look at the more uh, advanced GCF cases. But if this is one single expression and this is one single expression, then the GCF, what do they have in common? Well, they both have a 2. So I'm going to factor out a 2. What else do they both have in common? They both have this 3x plus 1 in common. This one has one of them, and this one has two of them. So I always take out the smallest amount the one with the smallest exponent. So I'm only taking out one because I only have one in common amongst these two expressions, right? So what do they have in common? They have two in common, and they have one of these 3x plus 1s in common. This is my GCF here. What's left? In my first expression, I took the 2 out, so I have that x still, right? I took this 3x plus 1 out, so I still have that 6. This is all being multiplied here plus, what do I have left here? Well, I took the 2 out, so I don't have that left, and I took one of these 3x plus 1s out, so I have one of them left. So I want you to see, if I were to distribute this back through, I would get the same thing that I had here. 2 times 6x, 2x times 6, right? Times 3x plus 1, plus 
2 times 3x plus 1 squared. So it's the same thing, it's just now I have a GCF times this case, which helps me simplify this down. Now I can <clears throat> keep the GCF in its simplified factored form and work inside the brackets. Now because there's nothing in front of this parentheses, it's simply 6x plus 3x or 9x and then plus 1. If you want to, if you need to represent it um, as a standard polynomial rather than factored form, then you would multiply this out, but this is my first derivative in factored form, which I think is the best form, especially when you have higher exponents, which we'll do next. Okay, so let's do another example, a little bit more complicated. Okay, I'm going to do three of these, I'm just gradually getting a little bit more difficult. Um, I might need more space, so let's see. Let's go ahead and put a line here and move on down. So here's another function. Here's my next example. Um, f of x is equal to, we'll keep it like this, uh, 6x to the third times 4x minus 3 to the fifth. Now, you see the difference between this example and this example. In the first example that we did, it's easier to just say 3x plus 1, square it, multiply it by 2x, and then find that basic derivative without going through a product rule. But here, I'm not going to, I don't know if you will, but I'm not going to raise this to the fifth power and then multiply all of that by this to take a basic derivative. I'm going to use the product rule with the chain rule inside it because it's going to simplify it, make it faster, and make it factored at the end of the day with less work. Okay, so this is a situation where you can't really, you don't want to avoid the product rule. So you need to know it, is my point. f prime of x, boom. My u is the 6x to the third. My v is this whole 4x minus 3 to the fifth. And we say it out loud again, the first. 6x to the third, times the derivative of the second, which is a chain rule. So I put a bracket. The derivative of this v here. Take the 5 down. Keep the base 4x minus 3. Subtract 1 from the exponent. Raise it to the fourth. And the chain rule says multiply by the derivative of the inside. All right, so this is the derivative of 4x minus 3 to the fifth using the chain rule. Again, if you forgot your chain rule, you have to go back and check that video out. First, times the, vi uh, the derivative of the second, plus the second, right, copy it down, times the derivative of the first, which is just 18x squared. Obviously, I have simplifying to do, and before I do that, I'm going to double check first times the derivative of the second, bring the 5 down, keep the base, subtract 1 from the exponent, and multiply by the derivative of the inside, plus the second times the derivative of the first. Looking good. Simplify. Now with this one, I'm going to write my step, but the only thing I'm going to change is this 5 times 4, okay? So I'm going to keep the 6x to the third, multiply the 5 and the 4, keep everything else the same, plus 4x minus 3 to the fifth, and then 18x squared. Because to simplify this, we're going to take out a GCF. Notice that I continue to write f prime of x, guys. Right? Notice that my initial function is represented by f of x. When I took the first derivative, I wrote, I wrote f prime of x, and I continue to write f prime of x so I remember what I have here. When you guys do higher order derivatives, you're going to want to know who's who and what's what. You don't want to mix up a function with its first or second derivative, okay? So always label things so you have it if you need to backtrack, okay? Don't forget to label. Now, here's my first expression, here's my second. GCF. So, what do I have in common? I have, well, at least a 6, right? A 6 here and 18 has a 6 in it, so I have a 6, okay? And then I have an x to the third here and an x squared. So x squared would be my GCF amongst the two, right? The smallest exponent. And then, of course, both of these things, both of these terms have a 4x minus 3 in common raised to the, would I use fourth or fifth? 
raised to the fourth, always the smallest exponent. Okay, so this is my GCF. Took out a six, took out an x squared. If I have another GCF, I could deal with that later. The 20 is still there. And then a 4x minus 3 to the 4th. And let's see what's left. Took the 6x out, the 6x squared from here. So I have an x still, and I have that 20. So 20x from my first expression. Nothing left other than that. Plus, I have an 18x squared, and I took out a 6x squared. So I still have a 3. And I only took out four of these 4x minus 3s. So I need one more to make it to the fifth. So 4x minus 3. So if I were to distribute back through, this should be the same thing, right? So I have 3x's, 6, 20, and 4 of these in my first expression. And if I distribute this here, I have an 18, an x squared, and 5 of these 4x minus 3's. Again, if you're confused on the GCF, we need to go back check and check out that video because I'll do multiple examples with that. All right, and then of course, all that's left is inside here simplifying. I'm gonna leave this in factored form. I'm not gonna multiply this out. Can I go ahead and say this is a 12x minus nine and combine like terms, 20x plus 12x. Oops, is <laughs> 32x and then minus nine. Notice that when I use the product rule and I use this GCF trick, I already have my derivative in factored form. I'm not gonna multiply this out. That's why I set up here, factored form is probably the best form because otherwise you'd have to multiply this whole thing out and ugh, nah, too much, right? We want it in its simplest form. If 32 and nine had something else in common, then I would take out another common factor, but they don't, so therefore I can leave it this way. The only other representation that I might suggest or you might want to do, depending on your teacher, is maybe bring this guy in front of the 4x minus 3 to the 4th to kind of go and have that exponent, the highest exponent represented last, okay? Now, I'm gonna do one more example in my next video, okay? A little bit more advanced, so I'm gonna call it the product rule three, video three, because they're gonna get more and more advanced, and that video is gonna actually have some exponentials in it as well, and then a double chain rule. So check out that video if you wanna continue doing the product rule, and let me know if you guys need any other examples or have any questions.